see people walking. Yep, here we go. Hey guys, it's a busy and cold morning here in Washington. I just saw Joe Biden go to church. The vice president is coming down this way in just a few moments, and then Marine One is coming. And this is all before 11 o'clock. And well, I haven't even had breakfast. I did, however, find this. Check this out. It's a baseball sculpture right here at some random government building. Never even knew this was here. next to the baseball sculpture is another sculpture and I don't know what it says Gli Italiani al Popolo Americano and it's got some guy throwing the discus trap I'm in the wrong spot just coming out of the tunnel since when did they come out of the tunnel He is a homeless tent. That was a small motorcade today. Oh well, sometimes I guess wrongly. <laughs> they didn't take the normal pass past. They didn't take the normal path past the Watergate, they zipped up through the East Street Expressway, which I showed you the other night when we went to the Kennedy Center. I guess that's actually a safer route because there's uh, very little traffic there and they can basically fly. Oh well, next time we'll get them. I don't know if you can hear it, but the sirens in the background, that's the foam task force making its way over to the White House grounds. I'm not going to film it today because, well, I'm on the other side of the ellipse. <laughs> Maybe next time. You can see over there, that's foam unit one. He sets up on one side, the north side of the ellipse. Foam unit two, the big one, is down here on the south side. And then a smaller engine is in the White House grounds itself, on the grounds right next to the south lawn. Actually, I think foam unit one is going on the south lawn. He's going through security. All right, so he's going to be inside. A lot of the close-up shots I've been using. For a lot of the close-up shots, I've been using this 18x iPhone attachable lens. But you know what? Let's go bigger. We just got this today, 36x, twice the size, twice the power. Let's see how it holds up today. Boy, they're low today.
I don't always get there. I miss the vice president and I missed Air Force One. It happens. That's life. Traffic. Anyway, uh, my day is now officially ready to begin. What a crazy morning. Uh, let's go get a burger, though, because I am absolutely starving. So this is the flight path from Anacostia to the Pentagon, or from the Pentagon to Anacostia, depending on which way you're going. And here comes a Nighthawk. That's one of the Marines' helicopters, part of the presidential fleet. Though he doesn't normally fly on the VH-60 Blackhawk Nighthawk that often, unless it's uh, in another another city, because that, that helicopter is pretty easy to air transport to other cities. I don't know if you can see it behind me, but there's actually a football goal post here. Just one. There's not one on the other side, so I don't know if they make it, take it or something, come to the one goal post. But there's a softball field here, and then a big open grassy area. You know what they do down there? Polo. That's the Washington, D.C. polo grounds. Kid you not, they actually do play polo in the summertime out here by the Lincoln Memorial. Let's, uh, let's make our way over to Abe Lincoln's place and then onwards. So it, it's actually really a bit of a disjointed day. I uh, took the kids to school in my you know school run clothes, which are like whatever I could find and throw on only to get a notification halfway through that the president motorcade was on its way to an undisclosed location. Those are pretty rare, but the White House pool put out a notification and I had to use some other uh, Twitter followers and techniques to find out where he was. So we ran down there. 
only then to realize the vice president was coming in, only then to realize that Marine One, which I thought was at one o'clock, was actually uh, 20 minutes after that. So I've been running around in my take the kids to school clothes all morning, which aren't that warm. <laughs> We're gonna do an abbreviated hike around the Lincoln Memorial and some of the monuments, maybe go over to the White House, and then I'm gonna go get some warm clothes. Right over here is the Korean War Memorial, which is starting to reopen. They're busy adding all the names of the fallen to this memorial on a giant wall. That's going to take a while. But the original memorial, which is these soldiers, oh, well, that's still here. Hmm. There's like ribbons on some of that. <laughs> They've added ribbons to some of the soldiers. I'm not sure what that's all about. Now this is an army patrol, but if I remember properly, this is, I think, an Air Force officer. And one of the guys, I believe, is a Navy corpsman. So they have like different services represented in this memorial. And then over here, they have the faces of those who served carved into the stone. And now they're adding the names of the fallen. That's going to be a big project and take some time. And they have these haunting faces looking out. Yep, so here's the 43,000 service members' names are going to be added to a new wall that's being constructed. It's interesting to note while the Korean War Memorial is a, a very popular visit for Americans who come to Washington, it is almost on the must-see list for Koreans and Korean Americans who visit Washington. Many of them pay their respects, bringing flowers, flags, other mementos to memorialize those who sacrifice themselves for a free Korea. In fact, whenever there's a visiting Korean military delegation to Washington, this is one of the must-stop places. All right, let's go take a look at the Lincoln Memorial today. I would say this, it is getting warmer. I didn't bring my gloves today. Like I said, it was a school run kind of day. But I'm not, like, losing my fingers. At least not yet. Maybe later today. So right down there is the World War II Memorial, the other end of the reflecting pool, and then of course the Washington Monument and the U.S. Capitol. Bob Dole's funeral will be this week. Um, they're having a service here in Washington, D.C., and they will actually stop his hearse and casket at the World War II Memorial for a public remembrance. That'll be Friday, and I'll bring it to you, as well as we'll show you the National Cathedral. Gonna be quite a few ceremonies for Bob Dole. All right, let's go up and we'll take a look right over here. This is the location of the I Have a Dream speech memorial, Martin Luther King and the March on Washington, August 1963. Let's go up the rest of the way. here where we haven't been in a while. This is the Vietnam War Memorial, also known as the Wall. The Wall of the over 50,000 names of those who died in, World, in the Vietnam War. Uh, 
Now let's go over here for a second. This is the book where you can look up people from every city in America, all the different names. Let me see if I can get under the glass here. Look, these are all the Thomases, Thomases, Thompsons, Thompsons. And it has the location and the name. So this is a Marine Corps Private First Class killed uh, July 14th, 1969 from Tennessee, and he's on wall 21, row 122, line 122. So let's head on down here. It's pretty quiet in the winter when you come down here. You can come down here sometimes and be the only person down here in the winter time, but in the summer and on major holidays, it's just packed. So here we go, John Anderson, there's your first name, but he's not actually the first casualty. The first casualty is in the middle, and the last casualty is in the middle. And they go out and then start over again. The heavy thing about this is that as you go along, the wall gets higher and higher. The names get more and more, and it gets a little bit intense, but then it starts to ease as you walk away. I wanted to point out something here. So you see this guy, Larry Van Rensler. Now he has a plus in front of his name. Same with this guy, Howard Smith, Dominic Spellini. These are missing in action. Their bodies have not yet been found. So they're listed as with a plus, which means MIA. Now, if they find the body, they'll come out here and drill it in into a diamond. So if they do identify the body, they will make note of that. But for now, there are still many missing in action listed on the wall. Now, when they do confirm a casualty or find a body that they didn't expect, they'll come in and they'll add it as close as possible to where it would belong uh, time-wise in these spaces that exist. There's another MIA. And you can see some of those because they they look a little bit fresher, the cut in the stone. The wall is now over 10 feet high as I get to the very heart of the wall from the first casualty in 1959 to the last in 1975. We, we used to live in D.C., so we've been here a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So these dots here help you count by 10, 10, 20, 30, so you can know which line you're looking for. Here, for example, you see this fella and this gentleman these are more recent cuts. They've just been located. Okay. The official arbitrary of all things factual down there. Yeah. And there as we go, the wall gets smaller and smaller. It's actually really heavy to visit this place. You come down and the names just get taller and taller and taller. But then you come out, it feels different. All right, well, maybe we, we could go over to the White House, but nobody's there right now. Still, we could take a look and see what's new. A lot of helicopters today as every day. Maybe we'll get a hot dog. We haven't had a hot dog in like a week. Mmm, tempting. Guy's still digging. Pipeline replacement. There's like a plumbing replacement, a telecom replacement, and a fence replacement. All going on at the same time. I think my scooter has a flat tire. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. 
It's a police car coming. Not entirely sure who. Motorcycle cop, actually. Interesting. So there's your white house. Still white, still a house. Construction still on the fountain. We're not going to see water there for a while, I think, because of the weather. And here's the Christmas tree in the daytime. Now, if you saw my video the other day, you got a much closer look at all the Christmas trees from all the different states. It's up here in the top right. Oh, there they're selling the White House Christmas ornament. That's the one with the blue one I was showing you guys the other day. All right, let's go up here. Someone's entering. Maybe that's the motorcycle. Three more motorcycles heading into the White House. We definitely have a vice presidential level motorcade going out somewhere. Don't know where. Well, thank you for letting us. Sure. Of course, they should give me another side of the car. We're not going to see it. Okay, back on Pennsylvania Avenue for the first time in a few days, where it is cold, cold and chilly. Also for a few days, because this weekend it's going to be like 70 degrees. That's going to be nice. Right now it's in the high 30s-ish. Let's see who we got out here today. Not a lot of protesters. Oh, we do have a protest. I don't know what they're protesting. Oh, undocumented workers. Protesting for... In Gainesville, it is common the to rights have of, conversations oh, sorry. about your undocumented status. As undocumented as as workers. We got all the oh. Christmas wreaths on all the windows. No Marine at the moment because, well, POTUS is not in. And no press. They're not really doing much either. So this is EEOB, Eisenhower Executive Office Building, used to be known as OEOB, Old Executive Office Building. Before that, it was the War Department and the State Department's headquarters. Over there is Octagon House. That was actually a six-sided building, but it's called the Octagon House. That was the White House uh, when the White House was burned. Yeah, when the British burned the White House, that became the de facto White House for a couple years. Or executive residence, I guess you could say. It's maintained today as a museum. Can't take you in there though right now because, well, COVID. 
like everything. So we're here at the National Cathedral in Washington and if you look up here, you'll see they're getting ready for the Bob Dole funeral ceremony. There's the TV trucks already showing up. Uh, I'm not sure what day that is. I think it's Thursday, probably Friday. Military officers preparing at Washington National Cathedral for Bob Dole ceremony this week.